all of us are gifted with creative abilities. We come to this world as individuals with unique creative abilities that enable us to harness the resources in our environment for us to survive and thrive. Do you agree? Do you see yourself as a creative person? Well, if you acknowledge this statement and say yes, then you are fortunate indeed. Why? Because many people have been made to accept the false belief that creativity is limited to those, you know, those other people. Those other people, the ones who society says are creative, who society says are in creative industries. I'm Catherine Gahu from SBO Research. Thank you for tuning into my channel, Elevators, where we offer elevating and empowering messages to help you grow in life, career, and business. In this video, I will talk about why we must choose to harness our creative abilities. I will highlight the benefits of recognizing ourselves as creative beings and working to develop our creativity. Do like this video and stay with me as we look at how we can develop and deepen our creative abilities. I am a passionate student of life, as I keep saying, and from my studies, I've come to believe that we are all creative as humans. And that's the truth. Even if the general conversation in society tends to suggest that most people are not creative, this is not really a fact. According to research, the difference is that a few people have developed and harnessed their creative potential to a great level. And this they have done more than others. In actual fact, the majority are those who have not developed their creative potential at all. And that's why the difference comes in. If you want to get greater fulfillment in life and to start living fully with dynamism and vigor, I would urge you to start working on developing your creative potential. I've heard it said that uh, if you follow the crowd, you will get no further than the crowd. There are two choices in life that we all have to make. You either choose to blend in into ordinary or you can be distinct. If you look closely at the world of animals, you will see that some of the small creatures have been given an interesting gift by nature. That's the gift of protective coloring. Because of this, many animals tend to blend in with the environment, while others like the chameleon will change color to adapt to their surroundings. The blending and camouflage serves to protect the animals and to enable them to survive and thrive in the jungle. Now, human beings by nature were not given this gift of protective coloring. I suggest that this means that we are actually not meant to blend in. We are all individuals with unique creative abilities that enable us to harness the resources in our environment to our advantage. This is how we are able to survive and thrive in this world. However, we see many schools, especially here in Kenya, striving very hard to enforce blending. They get everyone to wear the same uniform clothes and accessories. Many schools will even send the students home if they are not in what is called uniform. And some define uniform in very complicated ways. The other day I had a story about parents who were caught to school because their daughter was not in uniform. And they were at a loss because they saw her leave the house in the morning wearing the school uniform. The mother rushed to the school only to find that the issue had to do with the skirt length. Because the school defines what skirt length equals school uniform. To the chagrin of the parents, they had to buy new uniform because their girl had outgrown the skirt length required. Some schools even go to the extent of getting all students to wear the same hairstyles. The other day I saw in the news a story about parents who sued their son's school for expelling their son because he had different hairstyle. I think he had dreadlocks. And the interesting thing is that the court ruled that the school was right. Why? Not because you couldn't have a different hairstyle, but because the parents had signed to abide by the rules of the school, including those set by the student council, which included rules about student appearance. 
I'm not saying this to go against the school uniform rules in Kenyan schools, no. What I seek to do is to show you how this tendency to seek to blend in is built into us early in life, especially in our school years, until we come to think that nature intended us to blend in. And that's how we lose our creativity. So we become conformists, never daring to question anything, never daring to be different, never daring to change something in our work, in our life, in our businesses, because of that strong enforcement of branding in our culture. Now, in my high school days, many years ago, I remember how our headmistress who was very good, really, but very tough, how she went to the extent of ordering the same school shoes for all of us. For her, it was not enough to say black shoes and white ankle-length socks. Butter Shoe Company had to come to our school to measure our shoe sizes and then return with similar style shoes for everyone. And this was charged to our parents in school fees. This was war in attempt to make us to blend in. But the amazing thing is that all this could not defeat the fact that people are different. And some were taller, some were thinner, others all kinds of differences. The individual uniqueness remained. Coming from that kind of school, you can imagine the amount of work I had to do to start recognizing myself as a creative being and to start working to develop my creativity. Let me ask you a question at this point. What did your own school do to enforce blending? Was it similar haircuts, same length of tie or skirt? What were you forced to do in addition to the usual school uniform? We started with the point on the gift that animals were given. So the reason that we humans were not given this gift of protective clothing or camouflage colors that was given to animals is because we were given an even more precious gift. And that is the gift of the ability to change our surroundings to suit our desires. The ability to develop our creativity so that we can achieve the outcomes that we desire or even greater outcomes than we can imagine. We have the choice to use our creativity to brand in or to camouflage or to actually work to develop our creativity and distinguish ourselves. In that sense, we were given an even greater gift, the creative ability to harness our environment. That's why you see that when you change or improve in a significant way, you will find yourself changing your environment to reflect the change in you. While some say that people are a reflection of their environment, I think that it's not always the case. Or at least there is always room for change. The environment tends to take in the input of the people that live in it. If you travel through Kenya today, you will see the beautiful tea farms in Rift Valley, the sugar farms in Western Kenya, and many other things that have to do with the work that people have put in to change their environment. You cannot tell the way the environment in these areas used to look like years ago because people's input has changed it totally. Now, some of us can remember when coffee farms dominated space in Kiambu County. Today, all that is gone and the real estate industry has taken over where coffee farms used to be in Kiambu. There are large residential estates with hundreds of apartments, bed sitters, maisonettes and standalone mansions. There are a large number of rental homes and residences of all types and standards designed to meet the needs of who? Of the Nairobi workers. And that's why many have come to call Kiambu County Nairobi's bedroom. And I am not saying that all these changes are for the good. No. What I'm interested in is the lesson. What does all this tell us? The lesson for me is about the powerful gift given to human beings to be able to change their surroundings and not to have to blend in. The greatest value in this is to know that our own intervention is capable of changing our surroundings. Even in the sprawling slums of the informal settlements of Kibera and Madare in Nairobi, 
you will see great examples of the effect of the human input if you look closer. But because the external appearance of the branding may be helpful for fitting in, especially in such areas, you will see the effect of people's efforts only when you get closer to the ground. I guess this aligns with how many Kenyans say that on the ground, things are different. That is, things are not always how they appear from far. Anyhow, in all this, our creativity is at play and serves to influence our responses to our environment. Indeed, many times what happens is that when a person changes their approach, they tend to move out of their current environment and find a new one that closely reflects their changing self. That's how so many people left the rural areas and the villages where they were born and decided to move to the towns and cities where there were better facilities to advance their goals, to pursue their creative abilities. According to Bob Proctor, our attitude is the environment that we carry with us during the day. That is, wherever we go, we carry our own environment with us. Now, basically meaning that wherever we go, we carry our environment around us and that the people we meet and interact with can tell a lot about us just based on the attitude we carry. I like how Oprah Winfrey said it, that the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. This calls for developing your creative abilities. Now to sum it up, we need to always remember that we have a great gift of creative ability that empowers us to either change our environment or to move out of it to a new one that closely reflects our changed self or whatever we desire to change to. If we won't want to change it or move out of it, then we must choose to blend in. My question to you is this, will you choose to change your current environment, move out of it or blend in? How will you use your creative abilities? It's a choice. Thank you for staying with me. Do like this video and share it with several people who you think might benefit from it. Thank you and best wishes. We all need to elevate our mindsets at this time.